All right. Last time I talked about styling polymer components, styling your own components, and styling other people's components like the, by the polymer team. And tonight, I'm going to jump directly into code and talk about some of the custom elements that you can use in action to rapidly build app layouts, you know, the basic foundation, the structure of your app design. So we're going to be using UI components to make that happen. And we're also going to talk about layout attributes. So I'm going to talk about layout elements and layout attributes. And all the layout elements I'm going to be using is in the core library. Like Michael said, there's, a, there's core elements and there's paper elements. So I'm going to talk about a several uh, core layout elements you can use to quickly build an app layout. And then I'm going to go to attributes. And the attributes are basically just you know, your standard HTML attributes you can add to tags, which take advantage of the CSS flexbox. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, the first layout element, is called a core header panel. And I'm going to introduce like four or five elements you can use right away. And first I'm going to show a demo and then just show an example piece of code. It's pretty straightforward. So a header panel is basically just a container with a header up here and a content section. And the cool thing about it is that you can add attributes up here to this header panel that changes the behavior once you scroll this content area here. So by standard, you know, it's just going to be floating at the top. And when you scroll, it's just going to stick around with the container and not go anywhere. But you can also change, like, you can use something called a waterfall attribute directly on the core header panel tag right here. And once you do that, it changes based on your scroll behavior. So when I scroll up, it goes to full height. When I scroll down, it goes you know, to a standard fixed height. So pretty cool. And all I have to do is just import the core header panel using the HTML import tag right here. And then calling the core header panel tag right here. So I have a header and then a content area. So that's the first thing. And these are all going to, once I go through each of these one by one, they're all going to come together and culminate into, you know, an actual layout. The second thing I'm going to show you is core toolbar. So that was just for, you know, a standard like navigation menu header at the top. A core toolbar allows you to create a collection of, you know, tabs or buttons inside, you know, a container that goes inside a core header panel or, you know, another element like a card element and so on. So this is what a core toolbar looks like. You have, you know, say you had like a hamburger style button over here to open up a, a drawer and you had some buttons up here and maybe like you had like a, uh, a music player and you wanted to add a new song or you wanted to refresh the list. So toolbars are pretty handy too. And the code for that is pretty simple as well. You import core toolbar at the top in your HTML and you add it right here. And you can add buttons, you can add spans, you can do whatever. And you'll notice this flex attribute right here. I'm going to talk about that later. But that's what, all you do you know, when you're using UI components as Polymer. It's really straightforward. You just create a new HTML page, and you import the component you want to use. Make sure you include platform.js, and you're good to go. And it, the nice thing is you know, it's all HTML. It's all declarative HTML. You're not writing a bunch of different divs and using these arbitrary classes and having to go to the bootstrap documentation. It, it's really simple and straightforward, which I like. So if you load a bunch of these components, some of these polymer components, yeah. what does that do to like page loads? Good question. I think what is that thing that concatenates things? Vulcanize makes it a lot faster. You know, it takes all of your reports at one, you know, concatenates it to one file, which improves performance. Yeah, so there's a, a couple of answers to that question. One is that um, since polymer and web components are so forward looking, uh, to some extent they're kind of targeting like an HTTP 2.0 world where you don't have the same costs to keep like fetching new assets from the same uh, domain. And then the other side of that is like for today, you do have a tool called Vulcanize that Google made that will basically inline all of your HTML imports. So it's basically, it's sort of like concatenating and minifying your JavaScript, except for it's tailored for web components. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is that what that does? Okay. Yeah, so it, it's basically, like it takes all of your imports and just crushes them into a single file so that like the page load doesn't have to make lots of network requests. So it's kind of like compiling SAS or compiling yep. any of these other things. Exactly okay. like that. Yeah. And so core header panel, core toolbar. One of the last things I'm going to show you as far as elements go is the core drawer panel, which is basically just a, a side panel that slides in when you click a button. 
So let's say you had a mobile site and you know if you use the Facebook app, you have like a hamburger style icon button up here. You click it and a menu slides in and that's all it does. And at, you know, at a full resolution on a desktop, it's already there. But when you go to like a phone resolution, it collapses. And the code for that is also straightforward. You have core drawer panel, and then you have a drawer div to you know put in your navigation menu or whatever, <coughs> and then a content div. And I mean, there's not too much styling involved. Like a lot of it's taken care of for you, but you know if you want to make adjustments, you just use a style tag or an external style sheet and change the background color and whatnot. So all those things are pretty cool, pretty simple. The last element I'm going to show you is something called core scaffold. And that kind of brings all these things together very quickly. So as you can see, I have a, a, drawer, a drawer right here that slides in. I have a header panel up here. I have an, a navigation menu right here in the drawer. And the code for that, oh no, I killed it. And so I have like a complete, you know, an app layout already designed. It only takes one or two tags to get it done. And no, not much CSS required on my part unless, you know, I want to move things over when I click a button. So I have a core scaffold tag. I have my core header panel. And then I have my, uh, my, drawer, my drawer on the side right here. And then the content tag. So a good example of actually, you know, the core scaffold tag or a collection of these elements in action is our live coding tool for web components called Ellie. Let me log in. And you can see there's a core header panel up here. If I inspect that further. Which is also part of our core drawer panel. So if I click this, your elements slide in. And so all we had to do when we first fleshed this out is, you know, create these tags. And then I went in as a designer and I worked on an external style sheet and, you know, changed the background color. And that was pretty much all I had to do on my part. The rest is done all in the HTML using these elements and layout attributes, which I'm going to go into next. Do you have to do the CSS inside the template inline? You can't, like, pull in an external one? You can't. It just depends. Like if you're if you're styling if you're styling other people's components, my recommendation is use an external style sheet and pierce in the shadow DOM with special selectors. You don't have to actually edit the, oh, the template. Specials. You don't have to do the style tag inside the template tag for that component. That'd be just way too tedious. Right. So it's a platform independent, right? So some of the other ASPX page. On that, I can reference the library. Yeah, it's only it's yeah. And you just add the platform.js and then import the elements you want to use. And for the most part, I mean, it, it works in most browsers. I think they're, you know, supporting IE 10 and up, right? Yeah. And sometimes it works in IE 9. But it's really easy and fast to make a basic applet. I mean, if you have like a standard, like, you know, you need a header navigation bar, you might need a drawer panel, and you have a content area. I mean, that's all there is to it. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, layout attributes. So let me go to my example for that. Before I show you that, I want to show you, to show you how easy it is. Has anybody ever had to like vertically center, horizontally center a div on a page? And you're like, you, you go to Google and you're like, okay, what do I use? It takes forever to figure that out. It takes like an hour just to like. And every time you do it, you gotta do it again. It's a huge pain. And with Polymer, it makes it so much easier. I will show you right now. So I'm using these attributes. These are what attributes are. You just add you know, attributes to your tag to make it happen. And this is me horizontally and vertically centering a div. I just do call layout, and then I make it horizontal orientation, which I'll go into in a second. Center, and center justify. And I didn't write any CSS at all. So let me lay out attributes full bleed. It is so cool. Like I didn't write any CSS at all and I can make that happen. And I think uh, Eric with Google presented that at a, you know, a conference and everybody's like standing up and <laughs> like, oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> it's very convenient. So I'm gonna go an example, you know, just show you some examples of these attributes that you can use. 
And all I'm doing is I, I have some divs and I'm going to take advantage of this layout attribute, which allows me to take to use uh, CSS3 Flexbox. And CSS3 Flexbox, basically, it allows me to make flexible divs. So depending on the width of the screen, hold on, oops, I gotta remove this. It adjusts dynamically to the width of the screen depending on what I wanna make flex. So number the box two right here, has the flex attribute on it. So it's awesome, like if you have a navigation menu at the top and you have like that one would be a button in the top left, this two would be like a title centered and then three would be your right hand, you know, menu bar buttons. It's really convenient. Easy is it like to, if you want the mobile version, it's built in, yeah, it's completely responsive. There is some stuff for that, that allow you, it, there's some tags out there that allow you to add your own specific breakpoints and make changes. Call it core media core and things like that. These layout attributes, all yeah. they're really doing is uh, they're applying just like a little bit of CSS when you layer them in there. And so like you can still do like media queries and then as long as you're familiar with the Flexbox CSS, like Flexbox like in and of itself is an amazing technology. You can reorder things, you can like move things around so like if you want everything to like collapse vertically when you hit a certain breakpoint, you can still do that using CSS. You just have to like know the Flexbox uh, syntax and do it that way. Uh, I mean And you can kinda of see it in action right here that you said keep commenting. Because they, they simplify yeah. everything, maybe they have also done something because maybe Polymer 0.4 will have it. Oh <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I mean I like I, I agree that like I think that the layout stuff just blows your mind when you start using yeah. it, and so like if they can bring responsive into that in a way that doesn't get like really crowded, yeah. I think that it'd be like amazing. So yeah, instead of fiddling with all that CSS and you know having the right flex and WebKit flex one, I mean it's just I don't even know how to use it in CSS, and this is so straightforward. I don't want to do anything else. I, all I have to do is add the layout attribute, and then whether or not I want to have or, horizontal or vertical orientation. So. Obviously horizontal that way, vertical that way. And I want to make something flex, I add flex. Another cool thing is flex ratio. So if you want to have multiple boxes to be flexible, you can add, use 1 through 12. It's kind of like using columns and bootstrap. And there's also like what, like I would, what I showed you with the, uh, the horizontal and vertical centering. You have a vertical center and then to get horizontal center, you have to use center justified. True. I can't figure this out for the life of me. So those flex boxes, they yeah. have an overflow of scroll. Can you add that to them? Or is there, is it just cut yeah, I'm sure you can add, yeah, you can add overflow okay. scroll. scroll. You can, you can set fixed heights too, okay. yeah. Okay. So like, what you can do is, say you have like a, a panel and then you want like the lower part to scroll and the top half to be fixed. Yeah. Um, you can use the flex attribute to make the lower panel just like fill the screen and then you apply an overflow scroll to that element and then you can do new like flex layouts inside of that that will then scroll on their own independently so like you can like actually build layouts for the first time ever like using flexbox it's fantastic it's very there, there's a there's a website and I think it comes up in the first couple results if you search for flexbox that's like the things that Flexbox fixes. And it's just like a list of like every, you know, the holy grail and all of these other like problems that you've had with web layouts forever and Flexbox just fixes all of them. So there's only a few more attributes I want to show you. If you, uh, if you resize the screen, you want, you know, if you're on a mobile screen, you want these to collapse, right? You want, uh, you want them to go under each other. You don't want to have like these tiny little columns. So what you can do is uh, add the wrap attribute, which should push them down. I guess my example isn't working, but um, I will show you one. Or I can try to do it myself. Anyways, and then there's also, like Michael was saying, like you can, you can also change the ordering, which is really convenient when you're on a mobile device and you have, you know, you have a specific order that you need in your DOM. So you have div one, div two, but you need to show div two before so you had like a two column layout and on the side was an image and you want to show the image after the paragraph. 
you can change the order, you can reverse it. And all you have to do is add the reverse attribute. What about so, nesting? You can nest all these, yeah. It's insanely powerful. All right, and so I, you know, I wanted to work on a better example with all this stuff that I showed you, but mine's pretty rough. All I did was I was trying to work on this uh, basic music player. It's similar to the, what I showed you earlier. But what I did is I just took advantage of a scaffold and added a core header panel, added my menu for the drawer, just like a list of playlists and current album. And then here, like right here would be like a list of songs. And at the bottom, I used a, a flex box for a toolbar and just put some random buttons. Like the core icons of Abel Palmer aren't that extensive yet, so I couldn't find a play button. I couldn't find a, you know, backwards, forwards. You know, I just couldn't find that. But I just used some example icons and then like a, a song title right here and a player. And it was really quick and easy to do. And I, all I had to do is use attributes. It just conforms to the width of the screen. This took like 10 minutes. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys tonight.